This video is intended to show some of the basic details involved with the installation of the armor span standing seam metal roof system. This video is not meant to be inclusive of all conditions. If you have further questions, please contact Garland Engineering. These are a sample of the tools used for installing the armor span standing seam metal roof system. Please refer to the tool list in your installation manual for better detail. The accessory components used with the armor span system are shown here. The SC or System Components section of the shop drawing package identifies each of these. Please refer to the details for where they are installed. This installation video features products which require work along the roof perimeter. On most projects, fall protection equipment and observation is required. It is the installer's responsibility to ensure all federal, state, and local safety protocols are followed. Use of underlayments is based upon project requirements. Please refer to the project specification for their use and application. Garland provides flat sheet and matching materials and colors for use with the armor span standing seam metal system. Flat sheet must be provided by Garland as a condition of the system warranty. Make sure that you review the Garland shop drawings to address critical installation details. Garland system shop drawings are required on every armor span project for warranty. Shop drawing packages are produced for each specific project. Information is organized into separate sections. The first page titled, Getting Started, will help you to navigate these separate sections. Project-specific 11 by 17 pages are located directly behind the yellow Start Here tab. The first sheet summarizes material, component, and accessory information. Under the project name, the panel profile and width is identified along with the clip components. In the lower right-hand corner, the panel material type and color is identified. Ensure that you review the special notes and general notes sections. These will identify the clip fastener types and sealant requirements. Please note that these are specified installation criteria and must be followed to meet wind uplift, water tightness, and warranty requirements. Sheet 2 is the laid out roof plan, clip spacing, estimated substrate length, and detail callouts. Sheet 3 and subsequent pages contain the project specific details which were called out on the roof plan. Please note the specific details designating the panel fixed point and how it is achieved. Please note the tabs associated with each detail. These tabs direct the installer to a detailed isometric drawing which clarifies the conditions shown. Each tab refers to a page in the installation support section which is in the front of the shop drawing package. In this example we refer to PS or Panel Systems Detail HA-1.1. The isometric drawing shown describes the head closure detail with additional notes to clarify individual components, sealant, and fastener locations. To ensure panels and stall square to the building, first lay out the roof to square the area of work and establish a center line. From this center line, armor span may be installed in either direction. Benefits provided are two installation crews may work at the same time, and panel installation will finish with equal seam spacings at the roof edge. During detailing, the protective film must be removed immediately after trim installation. If film is exposed on the panel for any longer, it may damage the paint finish. Be sure to follow good roofing practice and installation sequence by lapping details to ensure proper drainage. The first detail to be installed is the eave trim along the low edge of the roof perimeter. To install this detail, position the hold down cleat first. Then fasten every 12 inches on center to the nailer. Ensure fasteners are positioned low on the cleat to provide maximum strength. The eave trim is then installed over the cleat and fastened 12 inches on center also. Ensure the fasteners are a minimum 3 inches up the roof edge to make sure they are positioned behind the foam closure which will be installed later. The detail of the eave trim can easily be modified to include a gutter. When specified, these details will be provided in the shop drawing package. Even valley foam is positioned over the flathead fasteners of the eave trim. Valley trim is installed after the eave trim. Notch the eave trim kickback to accept an overlap from the valley. The valley is held in place with continuous cleats fastened every 12 inches on center. Measure 6 inches out of the center of the valley and chalk the panel line. This line will provide a reference for applying valley foam and trimming panels. Center the valley foam between the chalk line and valley cleat. Ensure a tight fit where the eave and valley foam meet. Prior to installing the panels, the top end must be folded. This is accomplished with the armor span pan end tool. 
This tool is machined to the exact dimensions of the panel profile. When starting panel installation, reference the clip spacing requirements shown on the shop drawings. Clips at the eave and ridge condition will be spaced 8 inches in from the edge. Follow clip spacing requirements throughout the rest of the roof and pay particular attention to zone 2 and 3 widths. Clip screw type will be noted on the shop drawing sheet 1. While two screws are shown here, three screws may be necessary. Specifications and shop drawings will detail this requirement. Use a drill bit extender to ensure screws are driven straight. If an extender is not used, the fasteners will be driven at an angle. This may rotate the clip, which will cause binding with the panel and potentially oil canning. Install clips at the center line you marked during the roof layout stage. Then position the panel to these first two clips and clamp into place. Subsequent clips can then be installed along the panel. From this point forward, all clips shall be installed along a panel leg to ensure proper alignment. Use 6 inch step over clamps to hold the clips in place during fastening. The swivel pads of the clamps should be covered in duct tape to protect the panel finish. As clips are installed, double check the spacing. Slide the panel to one side. Now install sealant on the e foam closure. The sealant is applied in two rows of Garland's non curing, non hardening gunnable butyl caulking. The panel must overhang the eave edge by one and a half inches. This will accommodate thermal expansion and contraction at the eave. With the panel properly positioned again, apply sealant for the next panel. Run the two rows of sealant up the seam leg to prevent windblown rain and capillary action. Install the adjacent panel and clamp into place. We are now ready to anchor the panels to the clip and create a fixed point. Remember, this is only done at one location on the roof so that the remaining panel length is free to expand and contract. The panel and clip will need to be drilled, so protect the paint finish by using a cardboard shield under the area of work. This will prevent hot burrs from melting into the paint finish. A number 30 drill bit is used to drill the holes which will be filled with number 44 1 8 inch pop rivets. Ensure proper seating of the rivets as they are installed. Install subsequent panels across the roof deck in a similar fashion. Panel alignment should be checked every 3 to 4 panels. If you find the panel line sliding out of alignment, the seam legs may be spread 1 8 inch in correction. Once we get to the edge of the roof, gable clips must be installed prior to the last panel. This panel will likely need to be field trimmed to match the needed panel width. The last panel is cut to proper width. Take the removed seam leg and reinstall it to the panel per the detail shown. Install gable clips to receive the last panel. Note that the gable clip is positioned one inch off the roof edge. This is important to create the full gable end detail. Please note, all gable clips are provided with three screw holes. In this example, only two are used. Install the last panel. Once it is in place, clamp and rivet at the fixed point location. With our panels now in place, the seam cap may be installed. Note that the seam cap comes with factory installed sealants. This butyl sealant is very tacky, so ensure proper positioning prior to setting it in. You will not be able to reposition the cap once the sealant has made solid contact with the panel. Slide the cap down the length of the seam upside down. Next, position the cap so that 3 quarter inch is extended beyond the panel. Rotate the cap over the seam leg starting at one end and work to the other. Once the cap is set in position, hand crimp the top, at the bottom, and at every clip location along the seam. The purpose of the hand crimping is to temporarily bind the seam cap in place until the mechanical seamer may be used. The seamer is usually not used until all panels are installed so it is essential that the hand crimping be done as the caps are installed to provide strength and water tightness. The valley detailing must be completed before we move forward with the remainder of the eave construction. Panels terminating at the valley must be carefully cut to match the valley angle. Use the line marked at the valley pan to determine proper panel length. As the panels are installed, Treat the valley closure foam with the same gunnable butyl application that was used along the e-foam. Two rows along the foam and up the panel legs at each seam. The valley closure piece is installed after the first panel in the valley. This will allow proper alignment of the valley closure at the same time the panels are installed. Panel clips may be installed over the valley cleat but never in the valley pan itself. The next piece of eave trim to get installed is the edge stiffener. 
Clamp the edge stiffener into position with small step over clamps. This will be riveted into place using garland stainless steel colored to match roof rivets. Ensure the rivets are installed at the spacing shown in detail SC-1.1. After the edge stiffener is placed, check the valley closure to ensure it joins the edge stiffener properly. Again, please be sure to follow the rivet spacings as shown in the shop drawing package. The ridge includes several components. To begin, the ridge cap should be test fit to mark its placement. Use this notation to set the location of the ridge cleat and then the head closure pieces. Head closures are a two-piece component made of foam block and metal closure. These are made specifically to fit the armor span profile. The head closures must be supplied from garland and cannot be field fabricated. As the head closures are installed, be careful not to drag the metal edges across the paint finish. The head closures are installed by rotating into place and then fastening the tabs into the seam leg with 1 8 inch pop rivets. You will notice that the foam blocks are oversized to provide a compression seal against the panel. As the head closures are installed, be sure that there is a tight fit between the foam block and the panel. As a final measure to ensure water tightness, caulking is applied to the back side of the head closure. Use Garland's 50 year tripolymer sealant for this application. To continue with the ridge detail installation, we need to next install the ridge cleat. First install butyl tape along the top of the head closure. Then position the offset cleat over the butyl and fasten per the shop drawing detail HA-1.1. Fasteners are located at each seam and every six inches on center between the seams. Next, the shed ridge hold down cleat is installed and then the ridge cap placed to ensure a proper fit. We will remove the ridge cap temporarily to work on the gable end next. Dry fit the rake trim to mark the location of the rake hold down cleat. The rake trim needs to be modified in the field to close the front end or nose at the eave and properly fit with the head closure at the ridge. Once the rake trim is modified properly, rivet the inside leg to the gable clips for securement. The ridge cap may finally be installed and finished. Here the outside corner is modified to terminate the rake trim. Use the same 1 8 inch rivets to secure the detail. Please note, instructions for field modifications necessary to create these details are located in the FT or Field Transition section of the shop drawing package. The final step in the armor span standing seam metal roof system installation is to mechanically seam the panels. Garland provides armor span seamers for rent. The seamer features a 60 foot per minute seam rate, a reversible drive, a continuous operation feature, and requires a 110 volt power supply. A seamer operation manual is available in the shipping container along with a return FedEx label. Once the panel seaming is complete, finish the roof by folding down the three quarter inch cap ends at the eave. Use a pair of duckbill vice grips to fold the cap part way, then finish with a rubber mallet. This has been an overview of some of the standard installation details for the Armorspan standing seam metal roof system. If you have any questions or a project you would like to discuss, please contact Garland Engineering.